Okay, if you've been following this series, uh, you know that we've made a very simple uh, uh, application uh, using HTML and JavaScript. Uh, let me bring that up here. That window, this window, yes, this window. Let me close that. Okay, so this is what our application looks like. I have it both running uh, on my uh, web server and locally because there's no server-side script, so it can be served up either way. We've already gone over two options uh, that will be a cross-platform for desktops uh, using Python or C++ uh, with WebKit, either with GTK or Qt. To see that, uh, just uh, click on the annotation that should be on the screen for the playlist, and it'll bring up the full playlist for this series. Uh, it's a simple little, has a list of uh, options here that you can quickly search through and of course you can open this up on any web current web browser whether it be on a phone tablet or desktop well today we're going to be uh, looking at one option for packaging it for mobile devices um, so far as I said we've done desktop stuff so now we're going to create a take it and throw it into a package for Android as an APK or whatever an iOS package is or a Windows Mobile which is an uh, XAP or HP which is IPK which is also used for uh, some other Linux distros such as uh, uh, OpenWRT um, as well as BlackBerry and uh, maybe some other options here. And we're going to do it very simply using uh, some tools that are out there for us. Um, I have myself played with a few options um, as far as making Android applications. And I will do in this series, in the coming video, how to uh, manually create a uh, very basic uh, Android application and packages as an APK uh, for use on your phone. Um, but here is a very easy way to make it for not only Android, but, um, but other platforms as well. And uh, as I was saying, I've played with uh, one pass made by MIT, which I think was called App Inventor, which was all right. Um, but it only did Android from least last I checked, and that was a while ago, so I don't know if that's changed since then. But today we're going to be looking at PhoneGap. Um, and PhoneGap is an open source program uh, made by Adobe, I believe. Yeah, Adobe. Um, and uh, basically you take it, you point it towards uh, your package of, uh, of uh, HTML and its files for it, and it creates uh, mobile packages for you. Um, and it is an open source application here, uh, but we're not going to download and install it. Um, one reason is I uh, don't like installing things outside of my default repositories when I don't have to. And uh, yeah, that's the main reason. If it was in the repositories, I'd most likely download this and install it. I haven't actually used the actual program, but they do have uh, an online version uh, which uh, might not be as full featured, I couldn't really tell you, but if we go to, instead of phonegap.com, we go to build.phonegap.com, uh, we get the, uh, the online builder. And it's very simple to use, so I'm gonna say, uh, let's get started. Um, here you have unlimited open source applications, which is great. They're saying if you're making an open source application um, that you're gonna be using uh, like GitHub for uh, storing the, the program, uh, you have unlimited. So I love when, when I see this, uh, you know, as long as you're doing open source, you know, you can do as many as you want. Uh, when you have it so you can uh, collaborate and invite other people to develop and test on it, uh, you have unlimited. If you're going to make a private app, uh, you get one free. So, uh, so if you're just making something for yourself, personally, if I was making it for myself, I would just uh, open it up in my web browser. Really, when I'm making packages like this, it's to give to other people. Um, but here we go. I'm going to click completely free my one private app. Uh, here you have an option. Uh, you can use Adobe ID to, to sign in here. I have not uh, tried that option. I chose to try GitHub, which will bring you to GitHub here. Uh, I already have a GitHub account, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to say uh, let's sign up. Uh, I'll pick a username. I'll call it Films by Chris Test. Sure. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to 
put my email address here. I'm just going to use, I've talked about in the past, 10 minute email. I'm going to just copy this temporary email account into here since this is just for the video. And then I'm going to create a very simple password because after I write this video, I'm going to either delete this account or just never use it again. So create an account. There we are. Now that we've done that, um, now if you already have GitHub, a GitHub account, this is great. You, you're probably already logged in. You can upload all your files to GitHub and then point it to it. Um, since I just created this account, there's nothing in here. I'm going to hit back arrow a few times till I get back to my uh, builder phone gap site here and click GitHub again. And this time it's saying, since I've already created an account that I'm logged into, give, uh, give phone gap uh, access to your GitHub account. So I'm going to say authorize this app. Okay. Uh, now it's saying uh, this email address will be used. That's fine. That's the email address I just got from 10 minute email. Once again, if you're actually making an application, you're going to log in more times. You're not going to want to use a temporary email account. That's just for this tutorial. I'm going to say I agree to their terms. I don't care if I get any updates. Complete my registration. Okay. So I have my GitHub hub account set up. I have my uh, phone gap build uh, account set up. So I'm ready to go. Now, if I already had uh, a GitHub um, project going, uh, I can once again do as many open source as I want here. Uh, since I'm already logged in and I given uh, phone uh, gap builder access to my GitHub account, when I click here, it would show all my open projects. And basically, you just need to have a project with an index.html. And it will package everything from that and make the index.html your home page of your application. Since I'm not uploading anything to GitHub uh, and I'm not going to get into uploading stuff to GitHub uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to say private and you still have the option to choose something from GitHub, but I'm going to say upload a zip file. But I have to create the zip file first. So let's go back to our shell here and I'm in the folder uh, with the project that we've been working on. I've got my index.html, which is my main page. I got all the JavaScript and CSS in here as well. Also, you know, this is just like any other web page. If you want to have a bunch of pictures in your applications, you could put subfolders in here and whatnot. But I'm just going to use zip. I'm going to say zip-r for reclusive because I do have folders. If I didn't do that, it would skip the folders. So dash r, and I'll call it um, my test app dot zip and I'm just going to put an asterisk to put everything in this folder into that zip file and it shows you right here it added all this and if I list it out you can see my zip file right there listed out it's it's only 110 kilobytes now I can go back to the website click upload a zip file once again the uploading the zip file uh, is an option that you can only upload one application to this site so um, you can either create more accounts <laughs> or make them public on GitHub. If you're uploading your files to GitHub, once again, you can make as many as you want. Uh, it's just because I'm considering that the zip file is considered a private upload. So I'm going to click on the uh, zip file that I created here, mytestapp.zip, open, and it uploads the files. And uh, then at this point, you know, I can give it some information here. I guess this is the title. I'll call it my list view and enter a description if you'd like. And at this time, I'm going to click ready to build and it's going to start building it for all these different operating systems. I'm going to click on the iOS. That's the first one it builds. And you'll see I get an error there and I know I'm also going to get an error on the Blackberry uh, build as well. And the reason for both of them is they both required uh, keys. And so you can click here. Uh, I don't know much about iOS development uh, or Blackberry or really anything outside of the little bit I know about Android development. Um, but luckily, for the most part, we don't need to know much. All we need to know is our JavaScript and HTML, which is the whole point of this series. Um, so uh, uh, you can click this. It says add key, and it'll ask you for a title and ask you for the file. I'm assuming that you have to get that uh, uh, certificate files from from Apple. So you'd have to do that. Same with the BlackBerry. It will give me an error here. It will say that I need to uh, click on the signature file. So I'm not sure exactly how you get those signature files. Um, that's outside the scope of this tutorial, but Google that and just upload your certificates and those both should build all right. Android has an option for a certificate key, um, and but it's not required. I think that if you, and, and I could be wrong on this, uh, if you are going to put it in the Google Play Store, their market, 
Um, I think it has to have a signature. If you're going to host it on your site or just email it to somebody or you're going to give it to somebody else some other way, it doesn't need a signature. I'm pretty sure it's only if you're going to be putting it in the store. But once again, you click on this and it's going to say add a key and it just asks you to upload the files. So once again, you'll go to the Google Play and sign up for an account. I assume they give you a certificate file and you'll upload it there. Um, but at this point, I can download the APK. Uh, my XAP, my IPK, my WGZ for whatever operating system that is that has a little icon for an eye. Um, but right off the bat, we're ready to go with pretty much everything except for BlackBerry and iOS. You just need to get those certificates. I can download those packages or I can uh, scan this barcode uh, with, with my uh, phone uh, using um, something like Google Goggles and it will download that. I click install and I will now have this application installed on my phone um, and it will run very similar to how it would run in the web browser it's just that you have a package that you can now distribute um, now uh, there's I haven't played with this very much it looks like you can you can choose an icon here uh, under settings obviously you have your app title uh, you can tell it the version and give it a description delete this app if you want to delete it um, you can also upload uh, source code I guess. Um, so a lot of options in there. Um, I know that this is mainly using JavaScript and HTML, basically whatever you would in a web browser. Um, I think the full application here, as well as the one I mentioned earlier uh, by MIT, the App Inventor, uh, that the App Inventor actually is not just using the HTML. It actually has all the components of an Android uh, uh program using the their APK uh, or their um, what's the word I'm looking for anywhere their their files rather than just a web interface but since this series is on taking your web application and packaging it for distribution as a application rather than through a web browser I'm not going to get into that but you may want to also look into that once again the the full version of phone gap or uh, also Google the MIT App Inventor. Um, I have very little experience with all of these, but they do work. I have scanned this after uploading our files and it does you know, install right and open properly. Um, I know that when, you, when I've used in the past the MIT App Inventor, you do have options for the web view um, as in as such as uh, either you can allow Zoom or disallow Zoom. And if you have a lot of stuff people are going to click, sometimes I find uh, one of the advantages of actually creating an APK uh, and installing it as an app on an Android phone is that you can disable that Zoom feature, which the Zoom feature can be a plus sometimes, but if you have a bunch of check boxes or something for people to click, if they try checking them too fast, instead of checking the boxes, it ends up zooming in. Um, so being able to do this as a APK package uh, and, and being able to disable that is uh, definitely a plus if you don't need that zoom feature. I do not know of a way to disable that in the web browser, uh, the default web browser on Android. So um, once again, this is using PhoneGap and we use the online, online version. Just go to build.phonegap.com, zip your HTML code and all the files for it into a zip file, upload it, and now you have um, you know, your application ready for six different uh, mobile devices as long as you get signature keys for for a few of them. Uh, anyway, I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. I hope you're seeing uh, how easy it is to create an application that is uh, just easily distributed amongst, amongst all devices. Um, really this is possible with most programming languages uh, since everything kind of breaks down to C and C basically breaks down to assembly. Uh, so if you're writing stuff in Python, Perl, um, or whatever languages. Uh, some operating systems are very restrictive, iOS being one of those. Android a little bit, but not impossible. You can get all that stuff running, but if you are looking for just a simple uh, way to create a user interface, uh, HTML, JavaScript, JavaScript uh, CSS, these are great tools for that. And once again, if you actually host this, in, in this case we uploaded a zip file, um, with all the information, but you could point it to uh, 
your website. I guess the way you would do it with this is um, basically make an HTML file that uh, has a redirect using something like JavaScript to redirect to your site. And basically you'd upload a zip file here uh, with nothing but that HTML file that redirects to your website. Um, once again, all depends on what you're trying to do. Do you want it to be standalone with no internet connection? Or are you going to require internet connection and have the capability to update, change, monitor the, the, what the app is doing uh, at any time uh, that they're connected to the internet? All depends. But And another advantage of having it on your own web server, as I keep saying, is you can use your own server-side scripts at that point, or server-side programs, and then you can write it in whatever you want. You can write your server-side programs and in C, C++, Bash, Python, Perl, uh, PHP. Um, I suppose if you're running a Windows server, you can even uh, write your server-side scripts in something like Visual Basic um, or, or a batch file. Uh, I, I'm not too familiar with uh, Windows servers, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that, even if you're calling it through another language like PHP. And that gives you full control. You can now write applications for mobile devices in any language you want uh, just using HTML and CSS as your user interface. Just as when we're programming in, uh, in Python, we tend to use Qt or GTK. It's just a different package to display the interface. The background code is all the same. So now that I've been talking quite a bit, once again, please visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There should be a link in the description. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you're liking this series, uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Comment below uh, and let me know what you think. If you have technical questions that's more that you think might be more than just a simple, quick answer, definitely don't put it in the comments below for multiple reasons. One, uh, once a video gets uh, a little old, I don't really check the comments on it. I have too many videos to keep up with all the comments. Um, and two, it's just a horrible place to answer technical questions. So as I say at the end of most of my videos, if you have technical questions, uh, try to catch me in the IRC channel or talk to the other people on the IRC channel. Uh, that's on Freenode, Pound, Films by Chris, Chris with a K, or just go to my site, filmsbychris.com, and click on the link to the IRC channel. Currently, it's underneath the social network tab. Uh, although my site might change in the future. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching, and please visit my site. I hope that you have a great day.